All right, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's Wednesday Night Call. I'm so excited to see all your faces. I know it's been a few weeks, and I just want to thank you guys. Um, you have all been so beautiful and sent me really, really lovely messages over the last few weeks, and they've meant a lot to me. So thank you so much for giving me that space and that time. Um, it's been full on and, um, you know, a very big couple of weeks, but you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And, you know, sometimes things happen that make you stronger and make you more aware and all of those sort of things. So I believe that when storms come like this, they never ground you in the same place. They put you back a little better. So I'm holding on to that and I'm like, yes, <laughs> bring it on. So I wanted to have a chat with you guys tonight about the power of now, because I think it's something that, um, especially with everything going on in the world right now, it's so easy to tomorrow and next month everything. You know, we get ideas and we get excited, but you know, just not right now. Like, and I think it's so true that when our bodies aren't moving and we're not in routine, does anyone else find it's even harder to do anything? Like I move, I get more done in a busy day than I do in a clear schedule. If I'm like, I got all day tomorrow, I'm gonna book like 10, um, online parties and I'll just do it tomorrow because I've got all day, won't happen. I'll be distracted by stuff. I'll find out there's something else to do. I'll need a sweater before doing that. Like I just seem to find things like that. Whereas if I get up into the day and I start in the, my routine and get things happening in my little pockets of time, I message a person here and I'll message a person there and I'll message a person there and I'm so much more productive. So I think that, um, you know, just, touching on that now and really, um, you know, putting that fire in our bellies and that inspiration to um, understand the power of now is an important time to do that. So the first thing I wanted to touch on with you guys tonight was how cool is our new system? So Monday night's training was epic. If anyone hasn't seen that yet, check it out. Like I know they're always good, but who put your hand up if you thought it was like next level, like it was I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sit still. I was just so excited to, um, I've always been a very motivated person with this business and very inspired person, but I felt like that training just gave me more tools for my toolbox and more hope that, um, they're going to be the missing link. You know, if that makes sense, that's, that's how I felt, especially with the online party. So I really encourage you guys, if you haven't yet, make sure you check out the new system. It's so important, that new video that Cass has done. And then there's six units. So when you go to the iDesign Nation Facebook page, um, you'll see the welcome to the team video of Cass. And then you'll see the six units. It's in the left-hand side on the, of the page. Um, the first one's getting started, which is just all about how to place orders, how to sign up a consultant and how to sign up a PC, the Arbonne website, etc. The second one is your daily method of operation. So they're the tools, they're your actual little things that you need to do each day to build a business. It's really easy in this business to be caught up in the inspiration and the personal development because it makes us feel so great in the motivational videos. But without the daily method of operation, you'll never be paid for any of it. You know what I mean? It'll just be... Um, Oh, Brie, you're on twice. I can't hear you. <laughs> sorry, I'm going on to my computer. It's my oh, phone. Sorry, don't mind me. <laughs> All, <laughs> All good. All good. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so without that DMO, though, there's it's not a, you're not creating business. You know, you're just feeling great. It's just kind of like winning at Monopoly. Like, it's excellent. You feel amazing, but it's not really going to change your life, <laughs> you know, until you're doing things that are going to, um, yeah, that's right. It, and it's, it's so important, like, you know, feeling great and feeling happy is important. So I don't want to take away from the importance of doing those things, but the daily method of operation, the action part is the most important part. You learn the most, you grow the most, you become the most. And that's where the really fun stuff starts happening. When you start to build a team and you start having people thanking you for the impact you've made on their life. And those things are just amazing. So DMO is super important. The third thing is your compliance and culture. So just checking in that you're doing, um, you know, that you're putting the right wording on your posts and a few things, Very, really quick module as well to just keep you up to date with that. The fourth one is your 30 days to healthy living, how you want to roll that out, what that looks like. The fifth one is your personal power hour, which is what I was saying before, how to be happy. <laughs> people join happy people. So not, I mean, not fake mental happy. We've all got shit, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just how to get in check with yourself in the morning, how to check in that 
you, your signs saying the right things when you leave your house. You know, I, if you haven't heard me talk about that, I believe that we always have a sign. I always think in my mind that I'm wearing a sign around my neck. A chain goes around my neck and the sign's on my chest and it says how I'm feeling. So if you leave the house running late, kids are feral, your sign's like, don't talk to me, you know, or I'm late as usual, or I have no idea where I'm going, I'm a hot mess, or is it like, you know, I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm growing, um, I love to help people, you know, come, I'm easy to talk to, come and chat with me, you know, so that personal power hour is so important to help with that and to obviously feel great, guys, it's what keeps your fire going. And the sixth one, which was my most exciting one, I was loving going through that today, is the 15-minute online party, so the new rollout from Monday night looks amazing, I'm so pumped to get so much of that happening it makes so much sense that unit is mind-blowing everything is there forget the last party thing i shared just go to that unit unit six there's a small link there with um when you click on that it's got how you want to set it up it's got great post ideas it's got themes it's got everything that you could ever need i'm talking hours and hours and hours of our top leaders have work and blood and sweat and tears have gone into that and they're just like here you go you know, like we're so fortunate to have that just given to us. Like in any other industry, we would pay a fortune for a tool like that to be able to grow a humongous business. So really utilize that, guys. Sometimes, you know, there's that saying that goes, if it's free, it's not valued. You know, they say that about our education system today and all that sort of stuff. So just be mindful to be better than that, you know, because it's free, still see the epic value in that and really utilize it. Um, there's also scripts in there. Cherie Kemp's giving you an example of what hers looks like with her 15 minute prezzo. So amazing, make time to check that out, super important. And get, start booking them in. The other thing I wanted to touch with you guys tonight before I got into the training as well is just, um, you know, when someone's interested in the business, you guys all know that I'm here for you if you ever want to do three-way calls. I just want to touch on that because there was a period there where I was mental with three-way calls and I'm not doing very many at the moment. So I just want you guys to know that I love doing that with you. If you've got someone interested and you're not too sure where to go next, hit them up for a three-way call. Say, so, you know, I was just talking to Denny. She's been in the business for seven years. She's earned her Mercedes. Um, you know, she can answer any questions that you have. I would love to put you on to Denny for the two of us to have a chat. You know, guys, they're so powerful your three-way calls um there's a lot of um power in third-party validation you know just having someone else to chat to so book me up on them okay go for it i want have a race for the next one to book me in you know <laughs> reach out to me and let's get them happening yes book one brie let's do this i'm pumped super exciting so i wanted to chat with you guys tonight about the slide edge I just wrote down something out of um, Jeff Olson's book called The Slight Edge. This passage really changed my life and I remembered it and it took me about two hours to find it today because this was the exact passage that I wanted and I wanted to read it to you guys. Um, so I located it, yay, and I'm just going to get straight into it. So the book's called The Slight Edge, amazing book, and in there Jeff Olson talks about um, the, the curve in life, whether we're either going up or we're going down. We're either going up towards the life we want to have or we're going away from it. We have this idea that if we have a day of, of a, if we take a break, we're just going to hover in the middle, but you don't. You're either going down or up. There's no hovering. And he explains that so well. And, you know, it gives you urgency without, you know, crazy anxiety. You still need to rest, but you're just more aware of how important these little pockets of time is and how the people who are creating these lives that we're looking at and going i want time freedom i want financial freedom this is what they're doing yeah that's exactly right what lara touched on last night these little things that we you don't see a result for straight away the compound effect comes through so only those who continue to do it will really see the effects who are really consistent so he says in the book it seems most people live with one foot in the past saying only if things had been different, I would be more successful. And the other foot in the future saying when this or that happens, I will be happy and successful. So, and they completely ignore the present, which is all we really have. It's only the decision that you make in that moment that are slight edge decisions. The truth 
the truth is what you do what you do matters what you do today matters what you do every day matters successful people do the things that seem to make no difference in the act of doing them and they do them over and over until the compound effects kicks in how powerful is that when you hear that you're like wow you know just those and you know you'll if you set a little challenge for yourself and be like tomorrow in every little pocket of time i've got i'm just going to flick that message that um that message, uh, the templates there on how to ask someone for a 15 minute um, prezzo, online prezzo. Um, man, I tongue tied that up. But if you flick that message out and see, I'm gonna see how many people I can message that to tomorrow in my pockets of time. You know, cause if we, like, let's be honest, if we go, I'm just gonna wait till I get that hour block and I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna do 20. Chances are you just, it's not gonna happen. It might, which is amazing, you know, um, late at night, I don't know what your discipline's like, but I get all my kids into bed and I'm like, yep, eight o'clock tonight, I'm going to catch up on that book, I'm going to catch up on that training and I'm going to reach out to 10 people. <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't. But if I set that goal to do in my pockets of time throughout the day, I get it done, okay? And then at eight o'clock, I feel like I'm deserving of my rest. You know? I got two today, two oh, yeses. Nice. So I was like, ooh, I sent out about... 15 in two days That's and I'm like yes they're locked into my diary for next week oh honey I'm so excited for you that's so cool and with that it takes a lot you've got to send out like I think I got two out of 15 or 20 yeah yeah like it's a numbers I know you guys that we always say yeah. that's a numbers game but it is it's a freaking yeah. numbers game and then you'll find the next 10 might all say yes like yeah. it's insane how that how that goes you know um when i did it my first wave i sent out i sent out about 20 and i got about two yeses and then my next one i sat down and over that day i did about 30 and no joke about 15 said yes and then i was Whoa. trying to organize like, shit where do i fit in? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah, trying to get it all in so, just give me a couple down i'll do that <laughs> yeah you just just keep going you know and just be really mindful that when you're meeting people and creating those relationships on social media that you're adding their names to your list so you're not missing people and you've got people there to keep reaching out to as well. So um, that's what Jeff Olson talks about in there. And then Tony Robbins, <coughs> I wanted to touch on um, something that I found really helped me with that, with being able to have the discipline and the energy to utilise um, those small pockets of time, you know, and to not um, take them for granted, I suppose. Or just undervalue them and think, oh, it's okay, I'll have more pockets tomorrow. I'll have more pockets tomorrow. I'll have more pockets tomorrow. And then it's next month. And you're like, right, it's a new month. I'm going to set my goal. This month it's going to happen. And that first week you're doing it again. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. And now we're, now we're in the second half of the month. So it'll go to next month altogether. You know, and you're just, you, this is a cycle, guys. And the next thing you know, it's 2025. And you're like... Tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow I'll get it in. Oh, we've all been there, Maddie. You know, I'd be a massive hypocrite if I said I'd never, ever been there because it's so easy. That's why and we look at successful people as these people who are like doing something magical, but they're not. It's just that it's so easy not to do this. It's so easy to just, um, you know, not give it the credit it deserves and skip that little pocket of time. And very few, even though it's not hard, very few actually send out the messages in that pocket of time. Very few actually use that pocket of time to read a few pages of a book or take a book with them around instead of scrolling, you know, miles and miles of Facebook content. It's these little things that you swap around and they have massive, massive results. But we all think that it's going to be something massive and something bigger. And so we skip these little things but they're actually the things. That's all it is. And I really, you know, I remember the month we went into Nation Qual and I remember thinking, what have I done that's so, so great? And it was like, I've just been doing the little things consistently for a year, like consistently in every pocket of time. And with the kids, you know, I'm not talking every single night and 24 seven, but I did the things straight up in my pockets of time and you work out really quickly guys that these little things actually don't take that much they're so much bigger in our head than they are once you do it you know you touch you'd be thinking oh, i've got to touch with base with that pc i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it to and then the morning you're like oh i still haven't touched base with that pc and it starts to drain on you like it's more tiring to not than it would have been to do it and then you touch base and it doesn't even take a whole minute 
And you're like, wow, I procrastinated on that for like a week. <laughs> like, and it took 60 seconds. And that's what all these things are. It's just, it's just all little things, you know? It's not a huge, big effort-based thing. It's just being consistent. So Tony Robbins talks about how to, ch how to change your state and your physiology and stuff so that you can own these pockets of time, be excited about it, you know, want to get up, want to grab them, want to change your life and all of that sort of thing. And he says, your life changes the moment you make a congruent and committed decision. And guys, that's not like, um, that's not making a committed and congruent decision for what you're going to do tomorrow. That's like now. You ever have that feeling when you get this idea and you're like, oh, that's such a great idea. I'm going to do that tomorrow. For sure. Tomorrow, I'm going to start with this. Like, what are you doing right now? Like, is, can, the, can the show be put on pause? Can whatever it is that you're doing, if you're laying in bed, can you jump back up? You know, can you make a cup of tea and hang out for another, hang out for another 15? I bet you your idea would take five minutes. Not even, you know, like it's something you'll think of someone and think, I'm going to message them tomorrow. Sit up, message them now. You know, there's so much power in that. And Mel Robbins talks about that in her book, 54321 go, you know, her, the five second rule, sorry, because our brain overthinks everything. In our moment, I'll be like, oh, Maddie, I, have, I should offer the business to Maddie. I should just ring her and say, babe, I want to share this business with you. It'd be great. And if you, that moment you sit up and look at the clock and go, it's eight o'clock. It's not that late. I'm just going to ring her. And you picked up the phone and you rang you know, Maddie might be like, is everything okay? Has someone died? No, no, it's fine. I just have a business opportunity I want to talk to you about. Have you got five minutes? I'll be super quick. Yeah, what is it? Tell me about it. Can you imagine what Maddie would be feeling that night when she goes to sleep after that call? She'll be like, whatever she's on, I need to know more. She just sounds so excited. And you go back to sleep all excited too or lay back down. But if you don't call in that moment, you never will. Your head will go, oh, I can't call now. She'll think I'm a weirdo calling at eight o'clock at night. And it's probably not really for her anyway. You know, she's, she's a teacher. She's already got, she's done all that uni and all that stuff. She's got an amazing career. There's no way she's going to be interested in a side gig. And I don't even know if she really likes makeup and, and nutrition. I've never noticed that on her Facebook page before. You will never contact them. In these seconds, you've just completely talked yourself out of it. So it's so important, guys, to you know, recognize your ideas. And I don't know if you guys believe in law of attraction. I believe in it so much, but it's very rare that an idea will interrupt you somewhere. An idea comes to you because you're looking for them, right? You've done something that's told the universe, I want to make this happen. So the idea will come to you. That's the universe saying, I've lined it up for you. Like, this is what you need to do. There's a reason why you've got that idea. Trust it. Trust it. You know, if you're not going to make the call, send a message, send a voice message. I strongly recommend making the call, but I totally understand that that's, you know, the month that we had massive, massive months, everyone was just making calls. You remember, Amy, we were just, I remember doing business appointments, booking them in at 10 o'clock at night. Like people were booked in to talk. Who wanted, people I didn't even know were willing to talk to me at 10 o'clock at night about this business. If that's not law of attraction, I don't know what is because people don't normally want to do that, but that's what I was creating, you know? So I, but every idea that come to me, I acted immediately. And I think that's the key. I think that's a huge shift. You'll notice a massive shift in everything you do when you start to do that. You'll also notice how easy it is. Um, so um, I've already talked over all of my notes here. Yeah, so Tony Robbins talks so passionately about your state and creating your energy. He says it is the most important subject of your life. When I went and seen him in Sydney for his four-day conference, one whole entire day, the last day there, he said he saved the best for last and that was on health and energy and your state. And he said it is the most important thing. You cannot grow, sustain, achieve anything without this part. And I, and I really wanted to share it with you guys tonight because it has been super life-changing for me. There is no passion when you're exhausted. Who can agree? You, there's none. You're too tired. And the thing that exhausts us the most is doing nothing. He said, like, we're living in a world today where we're sitting down and, you know, we've got office jobs or desk jobs, which same thing. But you get what I'm saying? Like, we're nowhere near as active as we used to be. You know, we've, I've got three kids, so... And even though, and even with the kids, with this, um, you know, pandemic going on at the moment, I haven't been anywhere near as active as I usually am. And I've got three kids in the house, 
but you know, I'm doing homeschooling at the table. They're going out in the street. I'm sitting in a camper chair watching them ride their bikes. And I'm like, and I feel tired. And it's like Tony Robbins said, he often sees that with people like, I'm just still so tired and I've got a plan and I'm going to do this in the plan and I'm going to do that and I'm going to organise this to happen next month. And he goes, I just want to follow them home. Yeah, they just need someone behind them yelling, run behind them. Like, just run. Stop with the plan. You don't need a plan. Put your joggers on. Go for a run. He said when he set um, his biggest goal, so when before he'd gotten anywhere in life at all, he said he was renting this penthouse and he couldn't afford it. He was living on two minute noodles while renting the penthouse because um, he heard Jim Rowan say, you should rent out what you want to live in and have a taste of it because you'll never forget it. You know, go and spend the money, do that. When you go back to what you can afford today, you'll be like, oh, what do I need to do? I want to go back to the penthouse, you know? So he spoke about that. But anyway, he said when he was in the penthouse, it was his last week there. And he was like, I have to go. I can't afford to stay any longer. And he went for a run and he said, as he ran, I'm going to swear for any of you guys who don't like swearing. Um, but he was running and he said, every time I just looked down and I just said to myself, the entire time I ran, you're unfucking stoppable. You're unfucking stoppable. And he said, he just did it and did it and did it. And he got back like feeling like beat your chest, you know, like he had us feeling so empowered by that. Anyway, I've, I've done, I did that. I come home and I was running and I was doing it. And I swear to God, you just become unstoppable, right? So you're moving your body is so important, guys. And it goes and he says, and then that matches your language and what you're focusing on. So, you know, running your body, saying that things like that, that are, you know, so positive and empowering and all of that and focusing on what you want to create and your plan of doing that, right? You can't just focus on the end goal, focus on the plan. What does that look like? What's Lara Burrell doing? What's Cassandra House doing? You know, what are these people doing that I want to create? And be obsessed with every bit of nugget that they give us on their secrets on how they're doing that and focusing in on that. So he talks about the way the cycle works with your thinking that either creates massive success and you build and build and build or it's very self-sabotaging and you deflate and it defeats and it exhausts you. And the way it works is it's like a circle, right? At the top of the circle is number one, which is your base, right? Creating your base. Then you come around the side here. Number two, you've got um, challenging and growing. And then you come back up and three is celebrate and reward. So do you want me to draw it? I'll draw it. I think that will help. So we've got the base, creating a base, challenge and grow, and then celebrate and reward. And it goes like that. Is that what you were picturing? in my mind, so in your mind, sorry. So it starts with the base. So a successful person, right? This is how successful people think. They create their base and then, you know, like being, being completely all over the system, being all over your personal power hour, all of that, that's your base, right? Those six units, that's creating your base. Then you challenge and grow. So you do the things, you know, you get outside your comfort zone, you grow, you be consistent with that. And then you celebrate and reward, you achieve the things. And that makes you go, oh, I'm going to grow a bigger base. I'm going to go back. That, that worked. Imagine if I did it like this or imagine if I put more effort into my base and you keep going, you keep challenging yourself and you keep growing and it becomes an addictive cycle and it's exciting and it's fun and, you know, everything it feels like you're attracting everything and it's all happening. Or your thoughts, this is how powerful your thoughts are. You start at your base and you half-ass it, right? And you're like, oh, I just gazed over that and I gazed over that and I'll come back to it tomorrow. Um, you know, you send out three messages for online parties, you know, instead of your whole contact list or, you know, and then you leave that, you come back to it and your thoughts are like, this probably really isn't going to work for me. I don't think this is my thing. I don't think I'm the type of person people want to join. I'm not this, I'm not that, blah, 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 blah. Itty bitty shitty committee just kicks right on in there, just starts abusing us in our, in our mind. And then when we get to the celebrate and reward part for us, that's recommitting. Because we're, we're not celebrating and rewarding. We get, we get there and we feel the sting that we're not celebrating and rewarding. And we're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go back to the base and I'm going to do it properly this time. I'm going to come back around. I'm going to commit and I'm going to try again. And you get there and you do your base and you just keep doing this to yourself. 
you know, and you're like, and then the self talks like, I told you this isn't going to work. We've been going around and around and around, you know, but at some point you just have to pull back and go, right, creating the base. I'm going to do this all out. Just like they said, with faith and vision, you know, like that's that part so important. I'm going to act on my ideas when I get them. I'm going to do it like this, this time and have that, have that excitement about you. He talks about, he also has this triangle. I'll draw that too. I'm like Tony's biggest fan. Everyone knows that, I think. Um, he calls it the triangle of focus, right? And it is, uh, sorry, the, tri the triangle of state. So we all have a state. Like if you notice when you're feeling defeated and it's not going to work, you'll notice you're slouching, you know, there's no smile that, and you're very, oh, I've been trying and, oh, she said no. Like, you know, it's like your whole state just collapses, right? Being there, I know what it's like. And you look at your products and you're like, man, you know, everything just feels like, why won't it work? And you can feel everything sinking, okay? So that's your state. And he talks about how successful people can change their state in a second. Like they can recognise it and they can change that. So hang on, I need to just shut up for a second and draw it. Um, I always, I can never write the word language down without, I will never spell that right, I don't think, in my entire life. That word stumps me every single time. I always go lang language. Yes. <laughs> I always put too many U's in it. Um, oh, well. Anyway, and it's late. But this is, this is what it looks like. I'll put this behind it okay so this is called your state and this is you in the middle and these are the three things that affect it your language your focus and your physiology so you'll notice that the moment you start to feel defeated your language will become negative and then backed up by that you start focusing on all the things you told yourself about why it wouldn't work who does that? I knew this wouldn't work. I knew I shouldn't have messaged them. I knew I couldn't do this. I should have listened to Uncle Bill who told me at the pub that these things don't really work. You know, like I should have, you know, all this starts to go through your head. And then the bottom one is your physiology, which, you know, your body. You're like, oh, slouch. So notice those things, guys, and own it. You know, it's really powerful when you realise that everything's in your control and that these guys who are creating the life you want don't have anything going that you don't. Nothing. They're just owning this stuff. You know, they're just paying attention to the ideas. They're just noticing these little things about themselves and acting in those little pockets of time. So, you know, um, focus on that too. And the moment you see that, Tony has a move where he smacks his hands together like that. So you'll feel himself slouching and he'll snap his hands in. So create your thing, you know. Um, he got us to all do that when we were there and mine was a fist pump. Like I sort of grounded my feet and fist pumped and it does. It's not, He's like, you don't have to have your, you know, favourite football team win or, you know, you don't have to promote to national vice president to celebrate and feel that feeling of joy. Feel it anyway. You know, just stop for a second and focus. Instead of focusing on why it's not working, focus on why you're doing it. Focus on what it's going to feel like when you get there. Embody those feelings, you know. If you're all alone, he's, Tony's like, jump up and down, fist pump. Like, what would you do if they were, like, introducing Executive National Vice President Amy Clark? What would you be like? You know, how would you embody that? What would you, how would you walk out there and how would you own that? Feel it, you know, in every fibre of your being. Focus in on that and, and um, you know, and make sure you're up straight, that you're proud, that you're fist pumping and that you're saying things, you're breathing life into your business and life into everything that you're doing because law of attraction is happening, you know, whether you believe it or not, it's happening. So in all those moments, guys, where we feel defeated and we give in like that, we just start manifesting more defeating stuff. You know, so you snap out of that, change it immediately and be like, I'm aware of this and this is my edge. So in closing, guys, I thought I'd go over tonight because I was thinking it was a little bit longer than normal. But in closing, um, I wanted to share with you a few really strong things from Jim Rowan. And um, yeah, it does. All of you guys with ENVP in front has an amazing ring to it, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, a couple of tips I wanted to share with you guys from Jim Rowan in closing that I have written all everywhere. And I, you know, I was listening to one of his trainings this morning and I took a few notes and wanted to share them with you tonight. 
The first thing is he, he talks a lot about how reaping is reserved for the planners. Anyone who listens to Jim Rowan will nod and go, yes, that's something he says in every single one of his trainings. Reaping is reserved for the planters. Why? Because they deserve to reap because they've been planning. Um, this isn't Jim Rowan, but I remember reading the best time to plant a tree was 10 years ago. The second best time is now. Start planning so that you can start reaping soon. This is a business that, yes, we're seeing new Arbon happening at the moment for sure. We're seeing people like that, that new Heather lady, I can't think of her surname. She's blowing my mind to watch her. That on that training call, they said her success line's over 700,000. She's been in the business for like eight months. Like it's just, it's insane. So that's law of attraction when you know. When you're in a state of knowing and you're reaching out to people and you know that this is the best thing since sliced bread, they're attracted to that. Um, but, you know, sometimes you do need to give yourself patience and the time that you need to grow and change into someone who has that philosophy on life and who can see that. So have patience with yourself as well, guys. I want to give you a sense of urgency and recognize how valuable these pockets of times are. But I also want you to have that patience with yourself and just know that this is a reaping business. You know, you've got to reap what you sow here. So you need to take the time to sow properly. Take the time to build your foundation properly. And, you know, I'm not saying hold back. You know, what you know today is enough to, for someone to join this business. You don't need to be a pro. Procrastination and um, perfectionism and all of that is just fear. Like, get going now. But I'm saying just give yourself patience and the time it takes to become the leader and the person that you want. You know, Jim Rowan also talks about doors only open for those who continually knock. Okay, and sometimes as you're knocking, you go through some changes and your philosophy will change and you'll start to see things you didn't see before and you'll start to get ideas that you never had before. Allow that process to happen and embrace it because it's beautiful and it makes you become who you want to be deep down. So have patience with that journey too. Don't get frustrated at yourself when, you know, you've reached the end of the month and you're not where you want to be. Reevaluate. Go back to your base and go, right, where, I might have skipped a corner here. I could have been a bit more far in this area. Could have reached out here. I had these few ideas and I didn't act on them straight away. I'm going to do that now. You know, like, and, and, and have, that, have that real time with you. Um, uh, and, and in saying that as well, he talks a lot about receiving is reserved for those who give, which is what I love about this business. Have a heart to serve others. You can't buy a thanks for changing my life. And how like that, I find that so powerful what we have here. And I've had many people say to me, thank you so much for changing my life. Like that sentence is like, I'm telling you now, guys, it's more than any paycheck will ever be. It's amazing to have someone stand in front of you with a new sparkle in their eyes and a new vision for themselves and hope in their future. And they're backing themselves in ways they never have before. And they're feeling amazing in their skin and their health. And, you know, like, and this business, you don't get to reap what you sow and you don't get to receive until you've given. Give, 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 give. You know, you've got to be that person for people and help people see what you can see in this. Have urgency and understand there is immense power in now, but also have patience with yourself. Give yourself the chance to change and down the road, new doors will open because of your new philosophy and your new story. So what I was saying before with the cycle, quite often we need to change our story somewhere. So you've got to get real with yourself somewhere. And remember, if you fight for your excuses and your stories, you get to keep them. So there might be something in there that you're fighting for. You know, I've caught myself arguing with Jared at times about my excuses. And I'm like, why am I defending my excuse? I need to get rid of my excuse. So just check yourself with that. And that's what he means by your new story will open the door. It starts now in the early days when you do something little. What you do with something little shows what you will do with something big. You never know who is in your audience, so always turn up on your calls like even like the only person jumping on is your next ENVP. I love how he talks about that, like just really valuing guys, value what you have today. You know, Jim Rowan's like, I didn't, I didn't start with what I have now. I started with what you guys have now, you know, and, and I did the right things with that little thing and grew it into a big thing. There's nothing that I have that you don't have. And I love listening to his stuff. If you're ever driving somewhere and you want to type someone into YouTube, type in Jim Rowan. I uh, just love his voice and his wisdom. And he's just, he actually taught um, Tony Robbins. He was Tony Robbins' mentor. So it makes sense that my two favourites worked together. 
Um, I have a little five minute video I wanted to share with you guys about time. Do you want me to play it on YouTube? Because I know I've gone a little bit over time, but I'll just share the screen and quickly play it for you. I thought it was really powerful. Oh, I'll bring that back to the beginning. And I'll press play. Time is all we have. This moment, right now. There's only one thing in our lives that we're never able to reacquire once it's gone. And I'm not talking about money, I'm not talking about material items. I'm talking about time. And it's such a unique concept, unique idea, because when utilized correctly, it contains the ingredients to success, to happiness, to growth, prosperity, all the things we want. But at the very same time, if neglected, it leaves us with very little. Because the truth is, every morning when you wake up, you are living minutes you will never get back. You are breathing air you will never take in again. It is your one opportunity to embrace this gift. And every second sees a little of it slip away. And my point is that there is no moment more important, more perfect than right now. Not in a week, not after your promotion, not in 30 years when you plan to retire and relax. Right now. See, we have this mentality that the future is going to somehow mean more than the present. That if we suffer now or if we're unhappy now, that we'll save the best in life for some other time. But the reality is, we don't get younger. Yes, we should be working hard. Absolutely. Success comes from effort, hard work, dedication, persistence. But the key is, allocate your precious time to the work, to the things that make you feel like today is powerful. That right now is so amazing, you don't want it to end. Today is when you take the first step towards the things you want when you become who you want to become. No one is ever or will ever keep you from that other than yourself. There is no ceiling, there is no limitation, there is no special requirement, there is. Oh, oh it's an ad. <laughs> That's annoying, hang on. You and what you allow yourself to accomplish. You are the gatekeeper. You have your foot on the gas pedal. And it's so easy to point to others, right? To point to our environment, to blame things on everything. But our own decision, our decision to stick to the status quo. Because believe it or not, it is that simple. You are where you are because that's where you've decided to be and you've accepted that is okay. Look, if you want change, then manufacture change. Create a plan and move, go, transform. Step out of your head and into the real world. Think about how lucky we are to be alive in this day and age with access to all the information we can ever dream of, technology that enables growth, freedom to pursue any path that looks appealing, anything we could ever want is right in front of us, yet we don't embrace it. Why? Why in the world would we let that be? Nothing is more important in life than living it. Nothing makes us feel more energized, more free, more happy than following the path we were meant to take. It's having the courage to step over the obstacles, to face the challenges, to be uncomfortable. And at the beginning, it's tough, right? Change is tough. Getting what you want isn't easy. There's a period of struggle, of growth, but once you get through it, you understand what living really is. Which brings us right back to the concept of time, our small existence on this planet, the greatest gift a human being can receive. You, by default, have it. 
don't ever let it be in vain. The future isn't when happiness someday occurs. It's a continuation of you living every moment to the fullest, from now until your last. Make every trip around the sun better than the previous. Never let a moment of sunshine, clouds, or rain deprive you of your gift. Be the best version of yourself you can be. Live the life you were meant to live. All it takes is a simple decision. How good was that? I found that so powerful. I came across it today and I was like, wow, that's exactly, I could just play that and that's the training for tonight. <laughs> it's exactly the message I wanted to get across is it's that simple. You're like, you know, he said at the end, it's that simple. Cause sometimes we really make it bigger than it is in our mind and it's not guys. So that's my message from you tonight. Go for it with everything you've got. And just always remember guys that I'm here. You know, I'm here to back love and support you all the way. So reach out to me for anything. I've got your back. I believe in you. It's so nice to see your faces. <laughs> and I will talk to you soon. You too, Dan. You too, babe. So good to see you.